child. Stop! No! Havoc and his powerful plasma blasts. The X-Men are a group of mutants that have ruled the screens in the hearts of many, and the universe that they exist in is honestly nothing short of fantastical. People born with extraordinary powers and abilities who use it either for good or for evil, while some even tread the fine line between the two. The series has given us many memorable mutants, such as Wolverine, Jean Grey, Storm, Cyclops, Magneto, and the almighty Havoc. Alex Summers is Havoc, a tremendously destructive mutant who was one of the X-Men's new members and the previous leader of X-Factor. He was conceived by writer Arnold Drake and penciler Don Heck and debuted in the X-Men number 54. Havoc is best known for his capacity to generate massive plasma blasts, which he has notoriously struggled to control. He has had some bumps in the path over the years, which has led to his assignment with the Hellions, Krakoa's new band of disturbed mutants, as he tries to recover control of his mind and talents. Alex Summers of the X-Men has a physique that combines destructive superpowers with his one-of-a-kind link to the multiverse. In this video, we will be taking a look at his past and how his powers have evolved through the ages. Before we go on to our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Wreak havoc. The True Origin of Havoc Alexander Summers was born in the Hawaiian city of Honolulu. He was the second of three sons born to Christopher Summers, a U.S. Air Force major and test pilot, and Catherine Ann Summers. However, what was a blossoming and beautiful happy family was not to last for long, and soon disaster struck. When Alex was a child growing up in Anchorage, Alaska, United States, his father took the family for a ride in their airplane, which came under attack by a Shi'ar spaceship. As the jet went up in flames, and crashed. His parents strapped Alex and his elder brother Scott into parachute harnesses and threw them from the plane in the hope that they would escape. The Summers brothers were rescued and placed in an institution where Alex was quickly adopted, though his brother Scott stayed there for the majority of his youth. The Blandings took in and raised Alex after their son Todd perished in a vehicle accident. They attempted to mold Alex into the image of their son, and he did his best. When the child who killed Todd grabbed Alex and his foster sister Haley, Alex used his talents for the first time, incinerating the boy. Into the picture came Mr. Sinister, a malevolent geneticist who was enamored with the Summers bloodline because of the powers the brothers possessed. Post this violent outburst of Alex, he looked thrilled but shocked that Alex's potential outstripped Scott's. Despite the fact that he appeared to lack control over his talents, Sinister implanted side blocks in Alex's and Haley's mind, making them unable to recall what had occurred that night so that he would be able to recruit him and use him for his sinister deeds, as his name suggests. Despite all his hardships, he went on to study geophysics in college and acquire a degree in the field. He first encountered the original X-Men there and discovered that Cyclops was actually his brother. His mutant abilities were then revealed when he was captured by the living Pharaoh, who pronounced Alex to be the only being capable of rivaling his strength. In opposite proportion to each other, the two possessed the identical cosmic energy absorption powers. The Pharaoh was able to absorb sufficient cosmic energy to become the living monolith by imprisoning Alex in a protected cell. The X-Men endured a crushing defeat against the nearly unbeatable monolith until Alex was able to break free by himself and the monolith reverted to the form of the living pharaoh. Alex is better known as Havoc and this name came to be in the following manner. Alex's mutant power appeared to express itself only when he was close to death at first. He couldn't control it and was terrified of its great power. Larry Trask and his sentinels who were hell-bent on controlling or destroying all mutants later kidnapped Alex. Trask created an outfit for Alex to help him control his abilities and he was given the code name Havoc. Trask was revealed to be a mutant and the sentinels were destroyed by the X-Men. Havoc on the other hand lost all control of his abilities and his extra energy was consumed by Sauron. Havoc then regained control of his abilities. Havoc then officially decided to join the X-Men and began dating Lorna Dane, much to the chagrin of Iceman, who was also interested in a relationship with her. Professor X then contacted Havoc and Polaris about the impending arrival of the alien Xenox, while the senior X-Men were all in the Savage Land. The pair fell in love throughout this time. Havoc and Polaris were abducted by the Krakoa, the living island alongside the original X-Men, but were liberated by the new X-Men. The group's active membership was then terminated 
created by Havoc and Polaris, along with the majority of the core members. Havoc was kidnapped by the living Pharaoh living monolith once more, but this time he was saved by Spider-Man and Thor. For many years, Havoc and Polaris were sporadic members and allies of the X-Men. They alternated between conducting graduate study and receiving a postgraduate degree in the American Southwest, where they encountered the Hulk on occasion and assisted Maura McTaggart at her genetic research center on Muir Island, off the coast of Scotland. During their sojourn on Moore Island, Havoc assisted the X-Men in their battle against Proteus. Alex eventually discovered that the Corsair of the Starjammers was his biological father. Polaris was possessed by malice during one of their escapades, temporarily ruining their loving engagement. Havoc then went in search of and reunited with the X-Men. Havoc in X-Men Movies Havoc has so far been featured in three X-Men movies. In the film X-Men First Class, Alex Summers was seen to be in solitary confinement in a governmental prison, desiring it owing to the unpredictable nature of his talents. In 1962, Charles Xavier and Eric Lyncher negotiated for his release, in order for him to join their squad of mutant peacekeepers that were forming for the CIA. The warden cautioned them against putting Alex in a group, as Alex was the only inmate he'd met who preferred solitary confinement. Alex grudgingly agreed to join them. The Hellfire Club raided the covert CIA base, where they were staying while he was bonding with Xavier's other recruits. Sebastian Shaw, their commander, persuaded them to assist him in toppling mankind, stating that they should be with their brethren, the mutants, rather than guarding the humans. So, you can stay and fight for the people who hate and fear you? Angel Salvador accepted the bargain, and when Alex tried to assault Shaw with his energy waves, Shaw withstood the blast and used it to kill the mutant Darwin, who was attempting to rescue Angel. Following that, Alex and the others retreated to Xavier's mansion and started training to defeat Shaw. Xavier had converted an underground bomb bunker into a training facility for Alex, complete with mannequin targets. Alex was, however, unable to concentrate and regulate his energy beams on his own. Hank McCoy then built a containment chamber for Alex, allowing him to concentrate his energy blasts, which finally allowed him to control his own powers. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, the crew came together to combat the Hellfire Club for the first time. Shaw was seeking to provoke America and Russia into a nuclear war. Summers was amazed with Hank McCoy's fury, which accompanied his bestial change and christened him Beast, despite their initial squabble. Even I gotta admit you look pretty badass. I think I got a new name for you. Beast. He and Hank battled the mutant Azazel, and he also fought Angel alongside Banshee. Despite the fact that his containment unit was destroyed in battle, he was able to stay focused on his ability sufficiently enough to release a laser that chopped off one of Angel's wings, leading her to crash. Alex remained with Xavier at his new school for a brief duration after the battle until he was recruited into the Vietnam War. His second appearance was in X-Men Days of Future Past. Havoc served in the military in Vietnam in 1973 alongside Comrade Adds ink and toad while waiting to be hauled in for testing at Trask Industries by William Stryker. They were interrupted, however, by the appearance of an army colonel who turned out to be a disguised mystique. She questioned Stryker's motivations in kidnapping Havoc and the others when they were supposed to be sent home. The mystique then showed her actual form and attacked Stryker's goons, who were also attacked by the other mutants. When Mystique seized Stryker by the neck, Havoc launched an energy blast from his palm, knocking him over the table. The mystique informs him that she had it under control, to which Havoc responds that he knew, implying that he did it to help shield her. I had that. I know. Havoc then asks where Magneto was, to which she responds that she was alone. He then gets on a military plane with his fellow soldiers to return to America, leaving Mystique behind. An enraged striker attempts to prevent the plane from lifting off, but he was too late. Interestingly, after Alex's stint in the military, it is unknown what actually happened to him in the original timeline of this movie. Alex made his third and final appearance on the big screen in X-Men Apocalypse. Alex accompanied Scott to the X-Mansion as his younger brother began to manifest his own mutant power, reuniting him with Hank McCoy and Professor Xavier. He later joined Xavier to Moira McTaggart's house. Later, when Xavier employed Cerebro to contact Magneto, Apocalypse took possession of the Professor and utilized his telepathy to fire every nuclear weapon in the world into space. Xavier commanded Alex to wreak havoc in an attempt to prevent him, and Alex demolished Cerebro. Apocalypse and his four horsemen arrived at the X-Mansion after escaping Cerebro to capture a crippled Xavier. Havoc fired 
fired an energy blast targeted for Angel in an attempt to halt them, but they teleported, forcing the projectile to impact the generator. The subsequent explosion wrecked the X-Mansion, but Quicksilver arrived and saved everyone else inside except Alex, who was murdered because he was nearest to the blast. Where's my brother? Pretty sure I got everybody. Scott was very saddened by his passing. When Scott, Jean, and Kurt slipped into the helicopter that would take them to Alkali Lake, Scott wishfully told Jean that he should have perished instead of Alex, because Alex was the one who was going to do something with his life. Jean consoled him, informing him that she had previously read his mind and that Alex had faith in Scott's ability to do great things with his life. Scott's brother's death had a significant influence on him, inspiring him to become a superhero and an X-Men in order to live up to his brother's legacy. Alex, get out! Do it! Lesser known facts about Havoc. There are a couple of things which are still not widely known about this literal force of nature. Havoc has once swapped bodies, and this is how it happened. Alex attempted to reassemble his X-Factor unit and start a new chapter of his life after years of battle for control of his mind after being corrupted by many foes. Yet he appeared to have died protecting the planet before the reassembled team's first mission. However, Alex's psyche had been transferred to another universe where he was inhabiting the body of another recently deceased Havoc in Howard Mackey's Mutant X-Series. This Havoc was the leader of his corrupted version of the X-Men, known as the Six, and he resided in a distorted reality as his opposite counterpart. While the majority of Alex's talents remained the same, his new body was wedded to Madeline Pryor and he had a kid called Scotty who was named after the Mutant X's reality's lost Cyclops to name a few of the adjustments Alex was forced to adapt to. Unfortunately, he soon found himself having to fight for the survival of his new reality against his ex-wife, who had transformed into the Goblin Queen. This cost him his new body and resulted in his psyche getting lost in a void by a strong young mutant named Carter Gazakanian. There are only a select few entities such as Man-Thing who are linked to the nexus of all realities, which acts as backdoor access to the myriad parallel realities in Marvel's vast multiverse. Notably, that nexus lived within Havoc at one point. Alex Summers had been inextricably linked to every other version of Havoc in the multiverse, causing instabilities that both Alex and the multiverse started to feel. This prompted the Time Brokers, a race of creatures, to assemble a team of dimension-hopping exiles to rectify the faults in these realities, and the Time Brokers discreetly began to obliterate the various versions of Havoc. When the 616 Havoc went back to his home reality following the Mutant X series, he was pursued by the wicked specter of the slain Havoc he had supplanted, who then attempted to seize control of their shared form. In Chuck Austin and Clayton Henry's Exiles No. 30, the Exiles worked alongside the X-Men to aid the good Alex in recovering his body, while the Time Brokers extinguished the evil ghost of Havoc, cutting Havoc's link to the nexus of all realities. Straight up. Alex! What? Destroy it! Destroy everything! Destroy Cerebro! Havoc and his special powers. Havoc's physiology is already distinct from that of most other heroes, and the nature of his abilities has been a central theme in his adventures from his debut in Arnold Drake and Don Hex X-Men number 54 in 1969. However, Havoc's unusual physiology has a few exceptional components that distinguish him distinct from the rest of mutant kind, both because of his own uncontrollable levels of strength and because of his ability to easily bring other powerful individuals to their knees. Havoc is an alpha-level mutant who absorbs atmospheric cosmic energy into to his cells and converts it to plasma. As a result, you gain command of an extraordinarily powerful destructive force. At times he is unable to fully control his talents, making him a risk to others around him unless he uses a special suit to assist him. The body of Havoc is continually collecting cosmic radiation. When the capacity of each of his body's power storage cell enclaves is reached, extra cosmic energy is received and instantly re-emitted in minuscule proportions. Unless he absorbs a substantial amount of energy, it takes Havoc's body roughly 12 to 16 hours to recover to its highest level after he has expended all of his available energy. The effort of concentration required to release his energy in anything but an omnidirectional wave is physically taxing for Havoc if he does it for an extended period of time. He can absorb cosmic energy from his surroundings, such as starlight, x-rays, and gamma radiation, and store them inside of his body cells, then metabolize the energy to generate plasma wave discharges that superheat and disintegrate items, or concussion bursts by violently displacing air molecules in his path. 
His capacity to absorb energy is so powerful that he was able to withstand being placed in a massive star and use its energy to boost his strengths to the point that he effortlessly outclassed and defeated Vulcan. He can also shoot or emit plasma in the form of a burst or discharge with a distinct concentric circular pattern. Unless he deliberately tries to channel them in a specific direction, generally along the length of his arms, these waves will erupt from his body in all directions. As a result, you gain command of an extraordinarily powerful destructive force. When Havoc hits an object with the intense waves of hot plasma, the sudden enormous increase in temperature frequently causes objects to break, erupt, or appear to disintegrate. If Havoc directs his energy at the lowest level, then he can direct it at a human being, who will suffer from a severe headache but will not burn up. Havoc may also utilize stored energy for flying by channeling it downward as a propulsion and is virtually impervious to most forms of heat and radiation. Intellectually talented, Havoc is well educated in geophysical sciences and has received martial arts training from Wolverine. This works even better because Havoc has the unusual human power of a man his age, height, and build who engages in frequent hard exercise. However, he is not without weakness. At times he is unable to fully control this talent, making him a danger to everybody around him, unless he dons a special restraining suit. This could possibly be attributed to psychological trauma like his brother Scott experienced. Furthermore, while he is not impervious to Vulcan's power, he is somewhat resistant to them due to his capacity to absorb energy. Havoc is impervious to Cyclops' optic blast, much as he is immune to Cyclops' powers. Thus, Havoc truly lives up to his name and was a formidable force in the movies before his tragic and untimely demise. His powers were truly a class apart, and he had the ability to be on par with some of the most powerful and revered mutants of his time. Do you like Havoc? And what do you think about his powers? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.